Welcome to Ace MTG, and we have a straight up banger for you today. This deck is absolutely fantastic. Probably my favorite deck to play since the new set has come out. Before we get into it, please help me out. Hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. I'm a small content creator. It's free to you, half a second of your day, and it helps my analytics, pushes my videos out to more people to view. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Yes, Boros Convoke. We know it. We love it or we hate it, but now it's got War Leader's Call, which just pushes it over the top. So you like the Sanguine. We got this in our last set just because it gives you that other threat, right? Getting two bodies is always nice when you're dealing with a Convoke style deck, but you also got that battle cry. So when we were able to attack in, all our creatures got a plus one, plus oh. Well, War Leader's Call is giving everything a plus one, plus one, but it's that extra ping of damage. So whenever you go with this deck and you go against Wraths, it's kind of, can we kill them early enough? And a lot of times, right, you might get them somewhere between one and five life. It's like, how do I get those extra points through. Well, now with the War Leader's Call, you have that extra little burn damage. You have things like your Mirrix, which I might want to even bump up. We might need four copies of it because that's just extra damage. You get two War Leader's Call down, every time you drop a Mirrix, that's two damage to their face. And typically when the Mirrix is going to come into play is when you're going against control. So that could be incredibly nice, right? The rest of the package, what do we have as the new card? A Novice Inspector, okay? That just rounds us out even more because what we're looking for is number one, we're looking for some sort of artifacts. We already have it with the Epicure. Now we have the Novice Inspector. So we get a body, we get that. That's why you run the Gleeful Demolition because now on turn one, you could go Epicure. Turn two, you could potentially go another Epicure or an Inspector plus the Gleeful Demolition. We have five bodies on the field. We can now go with the Knight. We could have a turn two Knight and now we find our big three body threats we need to swing in for those big victories. I go with two bunny corns. A lot of people will go with four, and I get why, right? You're gonna have so many different creatures on the battlefield, they're gonna be very large. The only issue is you have no way to give it any type of evasion. There's no trample, there's no flying. So to me, I only like two copies. It could be a nice big threat, but it's not really gonna be a big win con for us. Resolute Reinforcements, once again, we're looking for as many bodies as possible. Charming Scoundrel. The reason this is in here for me is you're getting a two for one, okay? Just like that Procure, just like the Inspector. So I typically am gonna go the Treasure Token and it gives me now 10 sources of artifacts to hit with my Gleeful Demolition. Late game, you have your Mirix Token, which will make an artifact to hit with that as well. When I don't play with the Charming Scoundrel, I feel like eight is just not quite enough. And I don't want those Gleeful Demolitions just sitting in my hand. So as you can see, See, so many things are pumping out multiple bodies that the war leader's call is just basically ping, 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 ping. And if we do a turn one Epicure or Inspector into a Gleeful Demolition, then we have a War Leader's Call where we now have four one ones, which are now two twos. And now we're getting some serious damage in just on this all by itself. So all the synergies with here work so good. And then of course, Emendaden's Recruiter puts it all together, build a big wide battlefield, swing in, give that additional bonus. And this is your other key against control. And this used to be our only key against control. Can we get an enough damage and then sneak in that hasty damage to finish him off later on. Now we have that on top of the war leaders called burn and this deck is just spectacular. It pops off. Typically with my decks, the first game you see me play is the one I record for the video, but I've been playing with this one a little bit. So make sure you stay tuned to the outro where I'm going to show you my overall record with it, what its win percentage is and talk a little bit about it. Also in the outro, that's where I'm going to let you know what Jitsu belt this deck deserves. And I'm a Jiu Jitsu black belt and that's how I rank my decks. I absolutely love talking about decks and letting you know my true opinion. Is it good? Is it bad? Should this be one you could craft? And we have our final pack opening that I'm going to be using for a giveaway later on. But let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay because I expect this thing to be super explosive. All right, so very unusual for me. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. So normally with a deck when I'm playing, it's the first time. My first games with it, you get to see. But I've actually played a little bit with this one. And Cavern of Souls, I'm torn. All my deck, like I said, my intro is all humans and vampires. So I do like it to help out with the mana base, but War Leader's Carl obviously gets hurt. So. I think we do go, I think we say vampire. But we go charming scoundrel. We 
go treasure token, and I think I like my scry. So Mirix, next time we can get War Leader's Call, I think that will be good enough. So I think we'll do that. So we'll go War Leader's Call, and then we'll start to get cracking. All right, so we go right there. War Leader's Call comes out. They could have the Leyline Binding right off the bat. And we go Vampire here as well. And just getting in for five is best, right? Or get one scry. No, let's get in for five. Let's put the pressure and on them now. We now hit a land. We go Warden and we go Imidane's Recruiter. I suppose it's gonna have to be either a red or white. Okay. And this is what I love about this deck is in all my games beforehand, oh yes, here it is. So we go here, right? I think this is just enough damage, right? We'll, we'll let math be for somebody else. Right, those extra pings, though, the War Leader's Call is just enough. Flawless victory. I guess we technically didn't need those pings. But easy, simple game one, and this has been my experience. You're always worried. This is my first game recording with the deck, but I've played with it a bunch, and I'll show in the outro kind of my overall games and just had a really good record. And when I first started, I think I won my first eight games with it. Then I started getting some losses and kind of a back and forth with it. But I just feel like it is just so strong. Boris Convoke was already a super powerful deck. Now we're adding in a little Anthem and those extra pings of damage. I think this is definitely a top tier contender so we had some crazy crazy fast wins when we we're playing mono green aggro on friday and we might even get some faster wins today i do love this so just so we don't have to take the ping i'm gonna go with the vampire here first All right you want that war leader's call down early before you play the reinforcements but mana efficiency so let's think We'll swing in for one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just play my one mana spell. Okay. I would rather get the war leaders called down, get the extra pings. I know that then is swinging in with two, two, twos, but if we're some type of Orzhov control style deck, right? I would rather wait until after a wrath here. All right, so we go war leaders call now, try and get in for four. And then we could start doing some real damage. But I feel this is right. Sunfall, Depopulate, Wandering Emperor, all of those shenanigans on us. Holy cow. Okay, so this is how we do it. We just attack in for the four. Let him take that. Nope, Wandering Emperor. Okay, that's fine because now we're gonna get in lots of damage. So we're gonna, on their end step, double reinforcements, four damage to them. Okay, so they're gonna drop to 10. Then on our turn, we double drop, that's eight, and we have all of that swinging in. Totally fine. Couple, couple blockers, which is good. It might be able to make them stabilize though. I think they'll minus that. Oh, wow, they plus it. Okay. So that's 10. This will get them to seven. <gasps> Another war leader's call. Holy cow. Hold on. Let's think. That'll get them to seven. They could only block two. Th okay, we have it. Never mind. Just uh, swing it in. Just full on aggression. All to the face. Flawless victory. <laughs> just absolutely swarms and again the deck is already great but then we're talking that war leader's call look at all those extra pings that was four right there five six six extra damage going to their face with that thing plus the fact you've now bumped up your entire squad with that anthem effect the card is absolutely ridiculous 
So it is interesting. We've gotten, oh, that's a keeper. We've gotten two control style decks that we've gone up against and we've been curving out nicely. So right now we just have our normal kind of standard convoke deck and not even a good hand off of it. Okay, looks like we might have the mirror. Uh, alrighty. We swing in. Yeah, easy block. You gotta put it on, right? You at least make them question. So reinforcements, and then we got our sanguine. Question is, are they gonna get, okay, good. I'm really happy to see their red man attack there. Right, because you don't want them to blow up an artifact and have those three creatures out. Okay. We'll take the one. No blocks, because they're going to get bigger with our Sanguine. Bunny's nice later, right? We go right here. We'll attack in with everybody. Now, if they want to trade the 1-1 one for the 1-1, one I'm fine with it. Because the thing I am worried mostly about is the Knight. The knight who draws that first is just such a game changer, right? If we had a knight in our hand, we could have played that thing, refilled the hand, and then we're off to the races. So I would say the knight is the number one factor in this matchup of who's gonna take it, and then of course the anthem. Okay. If they could blow up these artifacts and get three creatures out of it though, we're in real big trouble. They can. Oh boy, that puts us in such a tight spot. Drawing lands right now. So we could go bunny, but I think, I think just going here is better. We'll attack in, we'll get a lot of trades, it looks like. Right, you know they'll kill this, but we'll get another bat out of the deal. So our next turn, our attacks could be good. Let's just go, uh, yeah, human. So next turn, we at least get the bunny and we could crack the clue token gone down to nine but they potentially have a huge attack coming in okay sanguine of their own Whew. i was worried there i thought they were gonna have another gleeful demolition okay that's even better though let's just call that one on vampire right that's just extra triggers for the sanguine here Right, really forcing some blockers upon them. So we get another bat. We get four in the air. All right, we have two bats and we have an inspector alive. And we have them down to five and we're at 17. So right now, sorry, we have three bats. So we're in much, much better shape than them. War leaders call, that's nice, but you can't attack. You don't have enough. You're gonna have to crack this clue token. We're gonna get for in for three in the air. Okay, that's just game. GG's. Mm. That just scares me tapping like that. I just I know we have a human one, but I want I want the red up. It just scares me anyway. All right, GG's. And in we come. All right, huge difference there though, right? We got the mirror match, we got the win, but we were on the play. So they were on their back heels that entire time. So definitely huge advantage for us. If we were on the draw, good chance we could have lost that game. All right, we're a nice, easy 3-0 right now, and I think this just has to be a keeper. Oh, I 
hate on the draw though. I really want to just be able to pop off, get those nice quick victories. And I'm, I'm seeing some black sleeves. I'm thinking lots of spot removal, but the biggest, th okay, Orzhov, that hurts then. I was gonna say, so the biggest threat to this deck is always going to be mass removal because you flood that battlefield so hard. And that's where the War Leader's Call just gives this deck that extra little push. Before, we couldn't handle a board wipe. Now, because of this, not only do you have that haste potential with Imidane's Recruiter, but you also now have that final points of damage with your burn to get through. So, interesting decision here. Oh, okay, nope, never mind. We got a life gain deck. All right. We don't want to take any pings. We're going to go ahead and pass. Part of me, though, really wanted to just put the inspector out. Okay. And they got the bat. All right. Well, they could take what they need to. So now they have a 3-3, but I don't see them attacking in. They now know we could trade with it, and there's a good chance I'm going to do that. They drew a little, they still attack in. Thousand percent. I mean, uh, yeah. I can't believe they did that, actually. I mean, that's really surprising to me. So we're going to go right into War Leader's Call. We'll swing in for two. And now we're set up a little bit. I mean, as long as they don't get another bat on us. Voice of the Blast. Oh boy, that's really, that is painful though. Right, that's gonna be a four, four. Five, five. I don't think we're gonna be able to come back from this life gang. We'll go and pass. If we have a flash creature, we'll use the flash ability. Oh boy. Yeah, this is this is this is bad. I think they got us, and I'm okay with that, because this is my favorite style deck. I love Orzov Life Gang. It's got a new fantastic one drop. Yo, yeah, that's that's game over, folks. I mean, look at this. Gang of life, gang of life, gang of life. And we just have no way of getting in. Oof. All right, we are just dead next turn. So we'll do our pings for fun. A big old bunny, but it's just barely bigger than their creature. GG's. They got us. The only annoying thing is if they go sit here and try to pop off. Like, just do your thing. End that game. But, I mean, you want another Flying Vigilance also. So, I, I get it. Yeah, just a real solid deck right here. I love this one. I love the new changes. So I can't wait to play that one again. All right, we like this. I mean, could be better if, I mean, obviously we're on the play, but uh, we at least get the Epicure. For mana efficiency, it's going to be Resolute Reinforcements. Maybe not. Okay, so now for mana efficiency, right? So it's gonna be Novice Inspector, Gleeful Demolition, straight into the night. And then we are off to the races. We're gonna see if we could out aggro Mono Red. Oh my gosh. We are just hitting right now. Okay, so... Blood, I believe, is less valuable. G 
get the knight. What do we find? Another recruiter. And yeah, we'll go right there. So next turn, so the reason I took the Epicure is I want to go Resolute Reinforcements, Epicure, I think, and then Recruiter. We'll, we'll see, though. Um, okay. It's fairly aggressive, right? Okay, yeah, they were just done. They did one final swing. They know my hand. They know we're going to get too much damage in. So back in the winning ways after that just awesome game against Life Gang. Just I love that deck. I cannot wait to play with that deck. It's my favorite deck from our last set we had from Lost Caverns of Ixalan all the way through. I played that when I was at Mythic number one. I played it in my streamer Kumite finals. I absolutely love it and it's got some big upgrades so I can't wait for it. All right, this looks like our first uh, mulligan here, though. Too slow. We could do better. We will keep this. And I'm going to ditch a land. It's. Oh, I hate to get rid of the Cavern of Souls, but I think it's just got to be there. Right? We want We want to make sure we have the red source. Yeah. So the reason we're doing that is we could go Novice Inspector, Resolute Reinforcements, Into the Night. Might be... Ooh. We like that. All right, so play our white. Get this down. So now it's going to be Gleeful Demolition into the night. Maybe. See, that's risky now. That is risky. I think we have to risk it, though. Yeah, they got no more lies. Well, I'd rather they counter that than my knight, I suppose. So the fact that we kind of expected that, maybe we should have tried to flash in. Yeah, this is going to be a hard matchup. We're going to end step now. Bring this out, and unfortunately, we can't really use the knight. We need to be getting damage in. So we're gonna try. I just don't wanna take a turn off to do that. So a good chance they have a wandering emperor, but at least we get some damage in. So you get rid of that, and they still will take four. Okay. So now we're setting ourselves up to be sunfalled. Wandering Emperor after the fact. Why would they take the damage? All right, so this is obviously a board wipe coming. Now you can make it 2-2. Two -two. All right, we're gonna go here. Crack the clue. War Leader's Call would have been huge. We'll play the land. I know that land has some value, but I think I want the two two twos if I could possibly get that out. Now they're building that big board on us. Okay. See if this lands. That's painful. I don't see a way out now. Right, they could start getting map tokens, just a ton of value. They have a, a much bigger board than us. The only good news is we can hopefully get a knight down. Maybe we find a one drop.
And we get both, so we don't love how it tapped for us. I'm gonna go Novice Inspector, just because I need to have a blocker, and if we use this and we try and scry, you'd have to tap down the Knight. All right, so now we pass. Thinking they have to have a get lost, destroy evil. No, I would have played it there if I was them, if I had it, so. Wow. That to me is aggressive. Are they going to do a full send here? No. Okay. Drop me to nine. Well, they're thinking about maybe not attacking. Okay. I was going to say, maybe, you know, you have the wandering emperor and you want to be cautious and make sure you have the four mana. I feel like a war leader's call though right now is my only chance to win. There's two war leaders calls. Let's go. I mean, I'm already super set up. If they have a Sunfall, they're just absolutely crushing me. Do not like that tap either. Okay, well, we don't have it. So we at least have a little something we could refill if they Sunfall, but to at least chump block their big old incubators. I'm gonna no attack, because if we attack in and they decide to take it and they have a removal spell, we're just dead. Because that's eight and then that's 10. So we need to have both. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stunned. All right, we got Zorius Control. I mean, we have not drawn well. We got one Imidane's Recruiter. We have no War Leader call. They're at eight. You have four, five, six blockers. How is it we're getting in? Right? You have a map token. Oh, man, that, that to me is absolutely crazy. Super early concession. I still think they have the advantage. Wow. Wow. We'll take that win and thank you very much. Okay, we'll still take this on the draw. Okay, enchantments. So they could go real big on us. So we're gonna have to go wide, is what I'm thinking. What is best? Oh boy, they're really hitting what they need though. Two gleeful demolitions. What is best? So if we play this, 
the following turn I think he's gleeful of demolition treasure It's unfortunate we don't have a knight here. All right, so no attack. So this is probably going to become a 3-3 three, three right now. Yeah. Four, four. And put the counter there. So that's five they're getting in. I think we just chump to not take five damage. Right. They're going to gain the five life anyway, which is devastating for us. All right. So now we go here. We make the treasure token. We gleeful demolition again. And we got to pass. It's just, they have the naturalist just far too large now. If they're able to get any type of audacity or the, uh, what is that? Rain of Truth, the, ba the plus spell. There's the audacity. So two more counters there. Well, d double it. Okay. So now we can't even block with everything and trade. Oh, wow. They do that. Okay. Interesting. I think we just pay the extra mana. We go War Leader's Call, though. We got to pass. We now at least have decent blockers because of that. Yeah, they're just going to keep making a Gigantor Naturalist. Only we had some type of removal. So what we really need is we need a Bunnycorn. It's like the only way we could deal with them. But then good chance you find an Oda or a Ossification, though. It's 11. Okay. And we need another artifact real bad. I think we wait. So we want the mana to be able to get two more creatures. All right, we pass. The good thing is, right, if they do have ossification, they have no good targets right now. They're gonna use it, but just no good targets. You get rid of two twos, which is obviously not nothing. And if I'm them, I take care of the tokens because you know they're gone. And now you could get in with a naturalist and copy it. So we have to play this before because we still don't want them attacking. Holy cow, a 9 9 flyer. Wow, 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 wow. Well, this is just over. I mean. Yeah, we just can't do anything. I mean, life gang is just the bane of, holy cow. That, that is just over, right? You put it all on the Catilla, I think you're gonna do 20, right? Cause you're gonna copy it. Yeah, GG's. The reign of truth with this deck. 26 damage. <laughs> oh, nice. All right, exactly what we want. Keeping this. So we go, this is gonna be a turn two night. We go, Epicure, 
Next turn, Gleeful Demolition. We have the one white mana. We tap the four down. Absolutely a fantastic start. Turn three, Imidane's Recruiter. We say game over basically right there. Granted, they could have removal right now, but they don't. So this is gonna be nasty, even better. Gleeful Demolition right here. Novice Inspector, just to have that extra creature, right? This is just, this is the perfect turn. This is exactly what you want with the deck. You get to play first and just absolutely pop off. And this just shows you how dangerous this deck could be. I mean, do we do it again? I think we might. Okay, never mind. We, well. Nah, I think we just get into damage. Okay, yeah, they're just done. So many different ways we could have just been absolutely nasty with that game. But with a start like that, they knew the game was just over. Not the hand we like. I'm still gonna try. Okay. I guess flight chicken, they take off. We'll, we'll take the easy victory. Thank you. Oh, that is that is brutal. All right, that's a no. On the draw again. I, I got to count up all these games. I feel like I was on the draw just a lot. We will take this now. This this is a keeper. We can get rid of one Epicure. Mono red. Okay, never mind. We're against Boros that Boros matchup here it goes I mean we'll see how they pop off right here but I think we 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 should be looking pretty good we already have the red all my vampires no I guess I have one vampire that's white but uh we'll, we'll call humans for this hate the mana efficiency I hope we just could find a one drop here oh wow 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 okay Mana efficiency, I think it's the reinforcements. And I think they have that exact same thing in their hand. So reinforcements, the turn after that, bunny corn, gleeful demolition, followed by recruiter. All right, we'll do that. Go ahead and pass. Let them throw in their reinforcements. So we're just battling back and forth. Ooh, okay, never mind. Ooh, interesting. Uh, mo most people who do this Boros Convoke, they don't run the Cavern of Souls. I personally like it. War Leader's Call. Yep. We're going to take this damage, though. Oh, my. Oh, my, everybody. We get the bunny. We pop this. We're on the draw, but we now are way ahead. One, two, three, four, and five. And we got Epicure, let's go Bunny and another Knight. We'll swing in for one, pack them down. Not gonna get through our Bunny Corn now. They're not gonna have removal for it. And heck, it might almost be just time for the recruiter to just go bashing in here. Not quite. We, we could go a little bigger. Let's just punish him a bit. Holding up the mana. Wow. Are right, you'd love to go wide, though. I still just think a bigger bunny. Let's attack first because we could grow it and they don't know it. See what they want to do here. If they double block, that's fine. Wow, they do run some removal. Interesting. Okay. Pretty rough taking seven. Uh, That's for human. Yeah, we're fine with that. One, two, three, 
four, and five. So yes, and I mean, yeah, let's just keep refilling, right? Get a scry, might as well land. We could bottom it, and we're just gonna swing in for the victory now. I mean, I want to see what they kept and what the rest of their deck is, right? They use Stoke the Flames, which I get. It's a, it's a pretty cheap removal spell, especially if you get a Gleeful Demolition. They got, yeah. They don't even need to know what our hand is. They just see two 10-10 bunnies out there. All right, we like it. We had an absolutely fantastic victory last time. Just what we want. We at least get a turn one, turn two, and then double war leader's call. Could be interesting. <gasps> so good. Okay, so we get our Epicure. We're gonna get our Novice Inspector, Gleeful Demolition. So if we get a Knight off the top, give us a Knight. Give us a Knight. Do we attack? Let's attack. Right, let's just see if they have anything. I really don't want my Gleeful Demolition countered. Uh, I mean, they, they, they uh, at worst case scenario, have a flash creature. Best case scenario, they have the actual counter here. But getting, at least getting the counter out, I mean, you hate to see it, but now maybe War Leader's Call will stick. But we only have just two creatures. That's not huge. We attack first. Let's see, do they have more counter spells? Okay, maybe we could have got more damage in then. All right, so we, we do miss out a little bit there. And I think what it's gonna be is just another War Leader's Call, because that is four damage if we have two of them out. Surveil. We do have to worry about also the new Black Wrath. Okay, so that's what they steal from us. Get this down. Uh, they could double block here. So I think I'll just attack like this. Okay. We're gonna end step. I think I'm gonna pop the blood token, get rid of our pain land. See what we could find. So we aren't liking the way we're set up right now. Okay, Ganjo. Too much land, too much land. We're gonna swing in. We're doing this because they have the creature land, so Ganjo can play here. Okay. Good discipline on their part. I really thought they might have activated their creature land. Siphon insight to finish off, right? We would love to flash this in, but I'm gonna have to wait. Maybe we should have drawn first. See if this will stick. It's four damage if it does, it's absolutely huge. Oh, they got that make disappear. Oh, yeah. All right. That does hurt. Oh my gosh, that's so good if we could find an artifact now. Uh, not 
good, not good at all. All right, swing in for three. You need five mana for that. So yes, you could activate it, but it's tapped. And we'll see if they now decide. I mean, technically, yes, we could have done the Mirrix and we could have Gleeful Demolition that turn, but we're going to do it like this now. And this is what is so nasty about having the Murex and the War Leaders call. Go human. So what we want to do is attack with both. We want them to activate their land. Memory Deluge. I mean, this is potentially six damage. I guess that was a mistake. We should have made the Mirix token. Well, that's actually, no, never mind. We have it. We have six damage right here. Can't have a cut down for it because it's got three power. So yeah, this is just game over. War leaders call, you get two of them down there. I mean, it is just absolutely nasty. And I mean, I think nice Demir build. They had good counter spells in fantastic spots. And then we just make our Mirix right now. GG's. Oh, wait, is that getting life? Oh, it's not GG's. Got ahead of myself. Okay. I mean, it's gonna be harder for them to come back. You have to kill my creature land. Still, I do love it. I win. Right, they, they, they got the card, gives them that extra turn. I just don't know what you could get. You need a sweeper, and then you also need somehow to be able to get rid of my creature land right there as well. Welcome back, and I did not lie, this thing is an absolute banger, so much fun to play, and some crazy victories. On Friday, we played mono green aggro, and that thing was good. We got a lot of wins, and we got them quick, but this one even faster. We're talking about some wins where after about a minute and 20 seconds, our opponent sees they have no hope. We did the thing like we talked about in the intro, right? We got our Epicure. Turn two, we played Inspector, into Gleeful Demolition, into the night. That is your turn to play. If you are going first, that is just a game over. We have flooded this battlefield with six creatures, plus now we have a whole good hand now because of the knight as well. Also, we saw against control. What did we have? War Leader's Call, extra pings of damage. That very last game we got there, we got the Mirix down and we had two War Leader's Call and it was just ping after ping and there was no way they were gonna be able to come back from that. This whole deck just synergizes so well. I mean, the Bunny Corn, we used it, but this is really probably a card you could cut. I just think it's nice in a kind of standard matchup that if you're going against maybe black and they just have spot removal and we just could get a big threat out there that's gonna bash in for damage because maybe they're killing everything else we have out there. I didn't even mention in our intro, why do we want so many permanents? Warden of the Inner Sky. This was a huge upgrade in our last set because now you go Inspector, turn two, you go Warden. We already have the three things. Or if you go Gleeful Demolition or the Epicure, any of these things now, we're getting that Scry and getting that thing up into the air is one thing that helps so much getting your victories. So now as far as what Jitsu Belt this deck deserves, this is absolutely, no question, a Black Belt. This thing to me right now might have a chance of being the top deck in our format for best of one for this month. It has been mono white ever since the summer. Mono white humans has dominated month after month. It is always the highest win rate. And I think this thing actually has a chance to just go over the top and actually get that crown. We'll have to wait and see, but for me, I have so much fun playing this one and it's great. So now let's go ahead and talk about the analytics I've had with this deck. Cause unlike most decks, I actually played this before I started recording some videos. So I had a little bit of gameplay. So right now with this deck, since our new set has come out, I am 27 and eight with it. That's a 
87% win rate. Now, I know you see videos and you'll see an 80% win rate, 90% win rate, but that's because they went nine and one. Well, I also have gone nine and one with this deck, but over the long run, right, you're gonna start seeing those percentages drop down. So to have at least that many game, we're into the 30s and we still are sitting there at 77%, that's really good. Now, obviously you expect once we get to 100 games, 200, 300, it starts dropping and we'll settle somewhere probably in the 60s with it, but that tells you this is a superior style deck. A good deck that's just like, let's say it's a purple belt or one that's gonna help you climb the ladder, you're gonna be 50, 55%. So all your decks that you're getting above that and any above 60, that for me is 100% a black belt. It can handle so many things. We could take out creature decks. We could take out control decks. We could take out mid range. So the fact that you could handle so many different style decks tells me it's a black belt. And what's really surprising about this getting such a high rating is because we have no interaction, right? We do our thing. We can't do anything to stop our opponents. You saw when we lost some of our matchups, it would have been really nice if we could have taken care of one of their creatures. Could have totally changed the outcome of the game. But because we have no interaction, okay, those games sometimes are just going to be lost. But it's amazing still how versatile this deck is and how many different styles of decks it can beat, even though we don't have any creature interaction for them. Now, if you're playing best of three, I still think fantastic. We have a great chance of swarming them game one. And game two, we have some really good sideboards where now we could put in some spot removal. We could even be cheeky and throw in a board wipe if we really wanted to. I doubt we would. But there's so many different things we could do after sideboard to now be able to handle creatures if we needed to. So I think this is a great deck for best of one, great deck for best of three. And right now it's my leading contender for the best deck in our format. Still very, very early. So we have to wait and see. But if you're somebody who likes aggro, I could not recommend this one enough. Another thing I didn't talk about in my intro enough is the Cavern of Souls, okay? Why do I put it in? Seems like a weird inclusion. But when you look through your deck, Boros doesn't have the best mana, okay? But we have all humans, or we have vampires, okay? So if all I'm finding is, let's say, white mana, then great. I could play it for red to now actually get out my Epicure, or I could say humans, and now all of a sudden I get my Recruiter down and my Charming Scoundrel. So there's so many different things. The only thing it does hurt you on is if you're sitting there and you get a couple of those and you want your War Leader's Call, because then you're not able to get that out on time. But I think in the long run, I think having the Cavern of Souls is a big boost, but not something you have to have, especially if I was playing this in paper, I probably wouldn't run it because those are crazy expensive cards. So if I didn't already own them, I doubt I would put it in, but I really like the addition of the Cavern of Souls just to make sure when you put down your recruiter or your knight, they're not able to actually counter that thing. So let's go ahead now and hop into our final pack opening. All right, here we go. Our final pack opening, the ones I won from the pre-release. So let's go ahead and crack this open. We haven't hit any major bombs yet. So let's see, maybe we get a mole god here. Let's find out. All right, so what, what, what do you have here? Okay, this is nice. They give you the little things. So you get your plus one, plus one counters. You're suspected. So they actually gave this out also on the pre-release in the box. It was part of it and you could like take them all out. All right, we just get a nice little art land. Whenever human control dies, draw a card. All right, we got our foil. Not, not a great card, obviously. Let's see what else we get here. Okay, Cranko. I do like that. Fun play around. Still trying to figure out a standard video where I, I want my Cranko. And we'll take the Surveil Lands. These are worth a couple bucks. Not bad. And, ooh, this played well when we were actually playing with our Mono Green. Okay, I didn't think it needed to go in, but I've decided this thing should go into that Mono Green. We wanted more two drops, so I do love the fact I have one of those now. Not, not really great and limited, not a pricey card or anything like that. So, I mean, all of this is just all limited cards we'd be playing with here. Pick your poison, good sideboard card. Limited and got another one. So nothing spectacular. Once again, we didn't get the greatest cards with these five pack openings, but they're going to go into something that's going to be used as some type of giveaway. Just got to figure all of that out, but absolutely love this deck. I hope you did as well. Leave me some comments. Let me know. What do you think about this Boros Convoke deck? Am I right? Is it going to be one of the top decks, if not the top deck by the end of the month? And make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's video. So until then, never forget, you're an ace.